So, I want to talk today about a story of growth, of my personal growth, of a journey that I have had as an expat living in a developing country, and that I think that many of you may have also had, or maybe I can help have you begin that journey. Now, we live rich in poor countries, some of us expats, and there are things that trigger that awareness. Is it, like, what's your trigger? Is it the, the children on the street? Is it the farmer in the field plowing in rags? Now, these things that we think about, but we only think about them some of the time. Because we live good lives. And for those of you not from a developing country, not currently teaching a developing country, you live a good life all the time. We in the developing countries, us expats in our golden ghettos, make decisions and live separate. And we often don't think about the people outside of our walls. And we don't think about it, what it's like for them. And if we do think about it, we don't know what to do about it. My strategy for, the, for many years was just to just kind of push it down and not think about it. Because this is so different from my experience. And about a year ago, I read a book, then I watched the TED Talk, then I went to the website and watched the YouTube video by Peter Singer. I encourage you to do so yourself. And in it, he presented a solution for how to live an ethical life in a developing country, or live an ethical life as a rich person in a country with people who are not. First, a scenario. You're walking to work. You're walking by a lake. And there's a girl drowning in the lake. Her parents are nowhere to be seen. What do you do? You save her, of course. You don't think about it. But do you save her even though you'll ruin your trousers and your nice shoes? Meaning, do you save her if there's a financial cost to yourself? Now, some of you might think, that's crazy I'm even asking that. Of course you save her. It would be unethical to do so. So what do you do in a world where that girl is not drowning in the lake in front of you, but she might be living in another country dying of malaria or diarrhea? Because we know in our connected world that 29,000 children are dying every day of easily preventable causes, no more, for no reason more than they were born by accident into the extreme poverty. So Singer's solution is that we give, those of us in the rich world, we give between 1% and 5% of our annual income and dedicate that money to eradicating extreme poverty. Now, what does that look like? If you make $50,000 a year with all those perks, if you add up the housing, the plane fare, the allowances, that's $500 to $2,500 a year in money which can and will save lives. How did you arrive at that number? If only the richest 10% of Americans, people making over $100,000 a year, not the teachers, of course, if they only the richest 10% of Americans gave between 5 and 10% of their wealth they would, like, annually, they would generate $461 billion a year to eradicate extreme poverty, which is double the number that was projected for the UN to meet its Millennium Development Goals one of which was cutting extreme poverty in half. Now there are questions about giving money, and there are good conversations that should be had and are being had about what is effective altruism. What is, what will my money do? My talk today is not about that. I don't have enough time. My talk today is about what you ought to do to live an ethical life when you live rich in poor countries. And while we're at this conference, using technology that wasn't imagined a, a generation ago, I want us to stop for a moment and think about it. the people who aren't at the conference, the people outside of the walls, who can't even imagine maybe where their next meal is coming from. The person who gets to me is my daughter, because I want to raise her in a way that she will have the awareness to ask me in a few years, what did you do when you lived in Ethiopia, when we lived so well in such a developing country? And I want to be able to look at her, and I want to be able to talk to her about the decisions my wife and I made to donate to the Hamlin Fistula Foundation, to sponsor an orphan, to investigate and explore other NGOs doing worthy causes. Because 
I want to live an ethical life. And I want all of you to pause and think about what can you do outside of these walls when you leave this conference. Thank you.